Hi, it's Paul from Model Builder International. Um, welcome to 2020 and the first video of the new decade. Today we're going to have a look at a kit from Clearpop that we sell in our store. If you're interested, check out our store, check out the prices. We try and keep them as competitive as possible and they compare favourably to pretty much everywhere, I think. So anyway, today we're going to have a look at the new kit for KI-51 Sonya 172nd. The Mitsubishi Ki-51, allied nicknamed Sonya, was a light bomber dive bomber in service with the Japanese Army during World War II. First flew in mid-1939 and was initially deployed against Chinese forces. However, it proved to be too slow to hold up against the fighter aircraft of the other allied powers. However, it performed a useful ground attack role in the China, Burma and Indian theatres, notably from airfields too rough for many other aircraft. As the war drew to a close, they started being used in kamikaze attacks, and total production was around 2,385. An interesting fact, on the day that Hiroshima was destroyed uh, by the atomic bomb, two KR-51s were responsible for the last Japanese sinking of a US warship, sinking USS Bullhead. Okay, let's see what we get inside the box. Uh, to start with, KI-51 Sonya, 172nd. This is an advanced kit, which means there's plastic and there'll be some photo etch inside. Uh, obviously by clear prop. Assuming these are the decal options on the side. Four of them, four different tails. Uh, 1942, 1942, now Manchuria, Southern China, Burma, and a flying school. And on this side, Handley tells you 170 plastic parts, 63 photo etch parts, so a fair few photo etch parts actually. And you'll end up with an aircraft that's what, 13 centimetres by 17 centimetres. And nothing much on the ends. Open it up and you just get a, basically that's just a box lid. Everything is inside a, uh, a corrugated cardboard box. So everything is nicely protected. So in here we have two bags of stuff and some instructions. So let's get the box. Instructions. Um, colours called out by in the AK interactive range and the mystical range, and obviously named as well. And, um, one part not used, I see. So maybe a different version or something later. I'll have a look, see what that part is later on. Um, so it looks like yeah, the outside sheet is actually your painting guide. Now that's a painting scheme to uh, make you stop and think. Well, that one's bad enough. And a couple of simpler painters, painting schemes. They look reasonably straightforward. Basically you've got top, bottom, port side views of both of those. Same with that. And the actual build guide. Uh, pretty straightforward. Nice, nicely laid out. Lots of colour call-outs, photo etch used. Um, looks like a lot of these it's not the photo etch is an integral part of the build, it's not an, an option to go for with PE parts, if, uh, sorry, with plastic parts if you want to go simple. Basically you have to use the photo etch. So it's uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 parts gets you the, 11 steps gets you the cockpit together. Then put the engine together. Nice and detailed, although a lot of it will be hidden, I suspect. And some more. Um, get some under some underwing bombs. A um, couple of different uh, propeller bosses. Looks a bit depending. And propellers, no, propellers are the same. Propeller bosses, depending which version you go for. Um, holes to drill. On all 33 steps gets all together. I'll go through those in a minute. 
with some close-ups of um, the parts. And there'll be uh, close-up photographs of everything here on the website. The link will be underneath this video. So let's start off and have a look at the plastic parts in a resealable bag, which is handy. So at first glance, I can see there's details there, raised and recessed. But I can't feel them with my fingertip. I don't know if I can feel them with my... I can see they're there with the reflection of the light, but the, uh, they're really fine. But I can feel some of the other lines with my thumbnail. So, there's the, looks like that's the underwing racks and bombs. The engine sprue and propeller. All nicely detailed small parts on there. Lots of nice detail on the in inside walls of the cockpit. But the whole thing has got tons of really nice detail on it. Very fine detail. You might have to be careful not to hide detail with a, too much paint. And here, fuse large herbs. Mm, no alignment pins that I can see. So you have to be careful lining things up. And again, lots of nice detail on the outside of things. And let's have a look at the clear parts and the fruit switch. So there's a backing sheet of cardboard in here as well. So I'll see where I can So that's the clear parts. Again, there's nice detail on there. I can see it's actually like rivet detail on. So one of these two go underneath the fuselage. So again, those are nicely detailed. Uh, looks like there's some masks. There's uh, basically clear parts, obviously, for the instrument panels. A whole bunch of, there's a lot of a lot of foot wedge parts on there. Um, so I'm going to keep you busy for a little bit. And then we have a couple of decal sheets. Um, it says this bottom one is a bonus. And they seem smaller. So I'll have to do some reading just to see exactly what this little sheet at the bottom is all about. Looks like a smaller version of that one. Maybe this is 144th? I don't know. I'll see what I can find out about that one. But anyway, let's have a look at the instructions and a close-up look at some of the parts. But so far, really nicely detailed little kit. Not for, not for the beginner because of the lack of um, uh, tabs and pins to line things up and the photo etch, but um, a few kits under your belt, this is a really nice little kit so far. Okay, history in plastic. Uh, a company called Mania released a 172nd KF51 in 1975, and that's the only one that's really sort of been out there. Uh, that company was then bought by Hasegawa, and Hasegawa are still using those same 1975 moulds to this day. Apparently it shows up in the later productions, whereas the really early ones are very good. Apparently it's a very good quality mould for its time, but it is now, what, getting on almost 50 years old. Um, so the clear prop is pretty sure going to be um, much nicer detailed. It's a much more modern kit than the only one that's out there. So what do we get in the box? Um, this is one of Clearpop's advanced kits, so we'll get some photo etch, but there won't be any resin extra parts. Um, the box itself is a thin cardboard top, but the whole box is a corrugated cardboard box, top, bottom and sides. Um, we have 170 plastic parts, 63 PE parts, there's painting masks, a decal sheet, and 12-page glossy paper instructions. 
So the build is done over 33 steps, but I'm just going to go through each page and just give you the edited highlights of what happens on each page. So starting off with the first page of the build instructions, uh, with plastic and photo etch, you put together the pilot seat, the rear gunner seat is plastic, um, the instrument panel, you have a choice of two options, either use the decal sheet and put that on the instrument panel um, and try and get it to adhere to the contours or you get an alternative uh, instrument panel where you can use plastic film and photo etch as well as actually a couple of small decal, decal parts to do it that way and then you put those parts onto like the cockpit floor that the pilot seat goes on and there's painting instructions throughout as well and you also put together like a um, the base on which the whole cockpit stands as well over the page we're putting together the back end of the cockpit, the rear gunner, oxygen tank, um, painting uh, callouts on here as well. Put together some uh, basically instruments that are fitted on the cockpit sidewalls. Um, again, you get a choice of using decals or film and photo etch. And then at the bottom, we're putting details onto the starboard sidewall. It's quite a lot of detail on there, um, and it'll look pretty good if you take your time in painting it. Next page um, basically is put the cockpit together. The two sidewalls, uh, the frame that the uh, pilots and co-pilots parts of the cockpit go onto, the front firewall. Lots of nice detail in here. The cockpit will look really nice um, when it's all together. Um, so probably go for something, maybe if using canopies open if possible to show off all this detail. At the bottom we start putting together the engine again. Uh, really nice detail, shame to hide all this. Um, but there's lots of detail, two rows of cylinder heads, the, uh, the tubes for the um, rocker bars. We also get uh, an exhaust ring in there and the covers for the engine going at this stage as well. So onto the fourth page and we're starting to get down into building smaller parts that we're going to use later. Start off with the very front of the engine. It looks like there's a radi small radiator there as well. Put together the machine gun for the rear gunner. Left and right undercarriage legs. This is fixed undercarriage. The wheels are in spats. Um, propeller. The same propellers used for all, all four paint schemes but Paint Scheme 1 uses a different propeller hub, and you have the option for that here. And then at the bottom we're building three different size bombs for putting underneath the wings in various places on the next page. As promised, um, basically putting the bombs we made in earlier steps onto various racks and pylons. That's the first thing we're doing. Then we put together the uh, tail, um, port and starboard elevators, the, uh, the control services are f not fixed so they could be free to move there. Um, step 27, we're putting together basically the top part of the cockpit, um, put adding some pieces that are attached to that and then at the bottom we're putting the fuselage together and the engine goes in, the cockpit that we've built earlier left and right fuselage halves. There's no alignment tabs on the fuselage halves, so you're going to have to be um, careful with that. In fact, the whole thing is, um, it's not a kit really for beginners, as it says it's an advanced kit, because you don't get any alignment pins, um, and so you'll have to be careful lining things up. Page 6, step 29. Um, Basically this one you're going to be drilling loads of 0.6mm holes and a couple of 0.5mm holes. Those are to allow you to affix all the underwing bomb racks. Then you put together the, um, the wings. Again, no alignment pins, so you'll have to be careful with those. Make sure you get things lined up nicely. Um, a clear part goes in that basically sits underneath the cockpit. And there's a couple of other clear parts going there as well. Um, again, just basically putting the wing together, but you'll have to be careful because there are no alignment pins. Okay, page 7, steps 30 and 31. Step 30, uh, put the aircraft together basically, attach the fuselage to the wings, 
ailerons are separate and attached to the wings. Uh, what it goes on here, elevators and some small parts around the cockpit. Step 31 is um, an optional one. Basically you get two options as to what bombs you put underneath the wings. Um, so you need to check with the references and the painting schemes to see which one to use. But in this one, you're attaching bombs, uh, the undercarriage legs go on, um, tail wheels, some small parts, and you have two bombs underneath each wing. The last page starts off with the second option for underwing bombs. Um, basically some six small bombs and a large bomb underneath each wing, and this time they're on bomb racks. And again you attach the undercarriage and small parts underneath the aircraft. And then the very last step you're putting the canopies on. You get a choice of canopy closed, canopy open. You get uh, canopy masks for this as well. Engine goes on, propeller, and the last few small parts, and then basically you're done. So painting and decals. Okay, you get four uh, paint schemes. For each of them you're given um, the Mr. Cullen numbers and the AK Interactive paint numbers and also the names of the paints. Um, the first couple of schemes are, um, should we say, there for advanced modelers only really. Um, quite detailed paint schemes, especially the first one. And the second scheme, uh, second, sorry, third and fourth scheme are um, basically a light green, inter oh, Imperial Japanese Army light green overall. You also get a bonus sheet of decals um, which I'll show you here and those you replace use these decals on the tails of the existing decal schemes. So basically it's giving you a choice of two aircraft from each of the units. Uh, decals overall look quite nice um, you don't no backing film that's outside or extra backing film to hide. Decals look quite nice. Um, overall, there's everything you need there to um, paint the aircraft quite nicely. It'd be really nice to see one of those uh, the first painting scheme option, but it certainly take a little bit of work to get it done. So an overall conclusion, um, easily the best 172nd scale kit of this aircraft out there right now. Uh, lots of fine detail on the aircraft, recessed panel lines, rivets, um, all the detail you could ask for. Need some fine painting to make sure you don't drown all the details. Um, you need to be used to building kits with no alignment pins, that sort of thing. So you need a few kits under your belt. Um, very nice cockpit detail. Um, probably might used to try and make the most of that by using the canopy open. Um, decal options, very nice. Two of them pretty complex paint jobs. The other two are quite straightforward though. Um, you get options to sort of see a variation of each uh, decal option as well with the uh, freebies uh, decals. Overall, it's a very nice kit, um, fills a niche in the market and should do quite nicely. Looking forward to seeing what their 144th scale kit of this aircraft is like. And don't forget, you can get this kit from our shop, the link is under the video.